Escape. Written by the Reverend Wilbert Audrey. Read and adapted for audio by TARDIS 9. Douglas had taken the goods to a station on the other railway. He was shunting, ready for his return journey, when he heard a faint hiss. That sounds like an engine, he thought. The hiss came again. This time it sounded almost despairing. Who's there? he asked. A whisper came. Are you a fat controller's engine? I am proud of it. Oh, thank goodness. I'm Oliver. We're escaping to your railway, but we've run out of coal and I've no more steam. Is it from scrap you're escaping? Yes. Then it's glad I'll be to help you, but we mourn work fast. Both crews joined in. They took off Oliver's sidewads, wrote out transit labels, and chalked scrap everywhere they could. Douglas marshalled Oliver in front of his train. Need time to turn around, he panted. A morn run tender fast. Yoo-hoo! Yoo-hoo! yelled a passing diesel. A steamer's escaping! Yoo-hoo! Douglas puffed firmly on. Take no notice, he counselled but they were stopped before they could clear the station throat. The foreman's lamp shone on Oliver. Ah, he exclaimed, a western engine. His light flickered further back. A western auto coach and goods break too. You can't take these. Can we now? said Douglas's driver. But they're all for us. See for yourself. Douglas's guard showed him the labels and papers. Oliver's crew hiding in the coach, hardly dared to breathe. Seems in order, said the foreman grudgingly. But it's queer. Sure it is, began the guard, but I could tell you queer. So could I, interrupted the foreman. Right away, guard. A near thing, puffed Douglas with relief. We've had worse, smiled Oliver. We ran at night. Friendly signalmen would pass us from box to box when no trains were about. We got unwell till Control heard about a mystery train. Then they tried to hunt us down. What did you do? A signalman let us hide on an old quarry branch. Driver, fireman and guard blocked the cutting with rubbish and levered one of the approach rails away. We stayed there for days, with diesels baying and growling like hounds outside. I was very frightened then. Small blame to ye, said Douglas feelingly. Presently, they rumbled over the bridge and on to the Fat Controller's Railway. We're home! They can't catch you new! Tell Isabel and Toad, please! Douglas called out the news and heard a joyful ting a ling ling ting a ling ling He was surprised. Oliver chuckled. That's Isabel, he said. There's a bell on her, you see. She's clever. When we go out together, I pull one way and push the other. When I pull, I can see ahead. When I push, I can't. So Isabel keeps a good lookout and rings a bell to talk to me. You dinner say. Douglas was impressed. About this toad, he continued. Is he? Hold you wish, said his driver. Yon's the works. We mourn slip in unbeknownst and find a place for Oliver. Douglas tried hard to be quiet, but the night foreman heard them and had to be told their secret. I know just the place, he said, and showed them an empty siding, nicely hidden away. Oliver said, Goodbye, and thank you, and Douglas puffed away. Ah, yawns an enterprising engine, he thought. I won away here with Donald, but I'd have been feared to do it on my own. You have been listening to Escape. Written by the Reverend Wilbur Audrey. Read and adapted for audio by TARDIS 9. The music was provided by Mavis M. and Thomas 1, Edward 2, Henry 3. The producer was TARDIS 9. Thomas and Friends is copyright by Mattel Incorporated.